There's a number of effects, right? I mean, you know, there's uh, there's Shrike, who's a you know digital creation, but you know, we brought all the experience that we had from you know working with an actor in the key role on set, um, like we did with Andy on on Rings with Gollum. We went into production with Shrike with the design that isn't his design. We got it to a point that you know with a lot of pressure to get shooting, and you know we knew he was going to be you know, this height, he was going to be sort of robotic, was sort of part man, and we kind of got to this point where it was, yeah, okay, look, that's good enough for us to shoot with. We're going to have Steven on set in the suit, and that's fine, but let's, we've got to keep going. And it wasn't until we finished shooting and we started seeing Steven's performance, and we're like, well, that's never going to translate to that design. We should have been a bit more wiser, but, you know, as part of the process, it would be something that we could then address. And we did. And we, we, we then went through the process of designing Shrike around Stephen's, uh, you know, face and his performance. You know, but he was tricky because he, he wasn't like an animal that we could take reference from. And he wasn't just a robot that we could mechanize. mechanize. He had to be a blend of the two. Um, and he had to be an interesting design that we, you know, that, that we, we took that was different to Terminator or Robocop or things that we've seen before. We had to give him his own aesthetic and his own character and make him very human, yet threatening and, you know, robotic and relentless at the same time. And Hester's scar. Hester's scar is, is, is a digital makeup. I and mean, we had a prosthetic, which was sort of very fine, but it was as far as we could push makeup. But we wanted her to be disfigured. We wanted to have this gouge through her face. And so we actually had to do that digitally to create the actual indentation that you couldn't naturally do. There was a way you used to be able to do it with makeup, which was you'd paint collodion on the skin and that would actually shrink the skin. And it would like, you know, it actually would disfigure you and it's really bad for your skin. And there's actors that used to use it that have skin issues now. So it's illegal and you shouldn't use it. Uh, but, and we weren't going to do that to Hera. So, you know, so we've, we, yeah, we, we did that digitally. The cities probably are one of the most difficult aspects because the fact that everything's moving, it really throws it out when you start moving the ground. And so we sort of actually approached some of it in a bit of an old fashioned way of just hand modeling everything because it all had to be animatable to move, which usually you don't have to do with your environments. You can build them, set them in place and just let the simulations run. But we actually had to move ours through um, space. So it created a whole lot of separate problems because they're not used to having the layouts that are usually fixed to be in motion. When I investigated and I read the books, I thought, well, you're never going to be able to pull that off. <laughs> you know, like the scale of it, the scale of the cities, um, you, know, you know, rumbling over the earth. Yeah, I thought that's, that you're never going to be able to create that scale on screen. So that's what stuck out to me. Um, was that it was going to be impossible to achieve. Um, and yeah, and here we are. <laughs>